hope you had a good uh, last couple of days and uh, welcome to the final day for ICN. Thanks for coming to the first session. It's always hard to get here uh, early in the mornings. Uh, I certainly do. Um, I think this uh, next session will be really uh, a fascinating one. There's some great talks uh, lined up for you. Um, so uh, I'd like to introduce first our next speaker, which will be uh, Jody, Jody Burke. And Jody um, commenced her uh, career as a new graduate at Vinnie's here in uh, Sydney, where she found a love for intensive care nursing. And uh, now she's sort of in Calvary down in, uh, in ED down there, where she started in 2016. Um, prior to ED, she acted as a CNC, well, uh, in ICU, and uh, for about 15 months, and she's got a lot of experience as well as after hours management sort of stuff. She's also um, very passionate about patient safety, patient satisfaction, and uh, teamwork. And she's newly discovered her love for ED nursing and has joined the Calvary ED team, so she's here to tell us a little bit about that. So take it away, Jodie. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I feel very privileged to be opening day two, or one of the um, couple of speakers who are opening day two, um, and I thank the organising committee for, um, so far, what a great conference um, we've been involved in here. Um, as, as Matt said, I'm presenting this morning. Um, I'm lucky enough to have been involved in a research project when I first arrived in Calvary ED uh, last year. Uh, Matt Luther is the co-director of the emergency department, uh, nursing co-director. Uh, Fergus Gardner and Bernadette Brady were all involved in this research proje project. Um, Bernadette being um, the quality, safety and risk complaints um, officer at Calvary at that time. Um, so empathy was a big part for her and her role. Um, what I thought I would do for the first session is actually open the floor and say, what does empathy mean to you? But I thought that would be a bit, bit rough at 8.30 in the morning. Um, and I'm sure that none of you really want to stand up and tell me what, what empathy does mean for you. Um, I had a discussion with our team last night um, over a couple of ciders down at the cider bar. And do any of us have empathy um, at the end of an eight hour period? Um, do, do any of us um, actually practice empathy? Uh, do we understand what empathy means? Um, I know that recently I interviewed um, a number of new graduate nurses for a program next year, and all of them threw empathy into that discussion, and I'm sure all of us have heard that word with undergrads before. Um, I, I imagine that all of us sitting in this room actually understand really well what empathy is um, and understand how we practice it each day. Um, what we did at Calvary was hopefully understand um, to a point of the whole team being involved in empathy. Um, to this date, a lot of the practice um, and the research projects have been about nursing and patients and vice versa. What we did at Calvary was ask and involve the whole team. Um, so clerical, wardsmen, uh, nursing, medical and visitors um, to the department. Because we all know that the patient journey involves the whole of the emergency department and not one area of our, not, not one, what, not one area of our department can run without all those people um, to a certain degree in some departments, in most departments, I would all think. Um, empathy is commonly referred to as the ability to put oneself in someone else's shoes. I think we'd all probably agree with that. There's lots of other words in that slide, but to me, um, that, that is what empathy is, put oneself in someone else's shoes. Sympathy. Sympathy is also a big word in healthcare. Is pity helpful in healthcare from our perspective as healthcare professionals? I recently um, spent some time with one of the nursing team at Calvary who, um, who has spent a lot of time herself in hospital. Um, and she projected to some patients her experience in hospital. And she actually felt that that was empathy. Um, and we had to a point where patients were saying, oh, I'm so sorry for your experience. Oh, I'm so sorry that you, you had to endure that in your time. Um, certainly the Calvary team didn't necessarily feel that was empathy, but the staff member actually did feel that was empathy. Again, everybody has a different definition for, for lots of things in, in what we deal with in emergency, um, and that staff member really thought she was being empathetic. Uh, the idea is to promote a multidisciplinary approach. The research has included, as I said, we included patients, including significant others, and clinical staff in the study design. 
The purpose uh, to date, as discussed, um, no educational concept behavioural interventions have included the whole patient journey, the whole team. As such, the researchers wish to determine the measured empathy scores for emergency department patients towards staff as perceived by the clinical team. The measured compassion fatigue, big word, compassion fatigue, um, in the emergency department. And three, whether an intervention outside of audio clips of the experiences of the people in the emergency department can lead to an increase in measured empathy. The study itself, the researchers used three survey instruments, including the clinician's perception of patient's empathy, consultation and relation empathy, the clini clinician's compassion satisfaction and fatigue and changes in patient and clinical empathy as a result of listening to audio clips. The audio recordings aim to capture the perspective of working in the ED, which is what we all do here, being a patient in the ED and being uh, a significant other, including, you know, you, you're on a night out and you bring your friend in after the night out, uh, your sig significant other being your next of kin, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your partner, whoever that person is that presents. This design enabled sharing of the, the lived experiences of the participants, thus encouraged empathetic feelings bilaterally between patients and us. The, the actual intervention, the researchers created a library of audio clips of employees, patients, the patients, families and visitors. These people told their story, their actual lived experience of what it was like to be in the emergency department at Calvary. Targeted participants included, as I said, patients and their families, allied health, physio, speech pathology, probably more OT, um, medical, wards persons, stroke porters, and nursing, as well as very important part of our team. Um, no more than any other part of our team though, of course, clerical. The audio clips followed the below structured concepts. Participants approved form. Um, naturally, we had to, because we were recording their voice, we needed their permission. Research topic introduction and information. Participant and interviewer moving to a private space. Um, obviously, within the ED, it can be quite noisy, so we just needed to take them aside um, so that we could get a clear, clear audio clip of what they were trying to say. Interviewer asking the participant the following questions. What was being in the emergency department like for you today? Recording the audio interview, interviewer thanking the participant and concluding the interview, and interviewer saying the, reco saying the recording on, saving the recording on a um, hard drive, secure hard drive. As discussed, the aim of collecting these stories, the audio clips, um, was to capture and share the perspective of what, what it's like for us, but what it's like for our whole team, what it's like to be a patient in our ED, and what it's like to be someone, someone significant with a patient. Uh, this is what we use for the mod modified care tool, described as clinical measure of a patient's empathy. Um, for the patient, we modified, and for the staff member and the significant other, we modified. Um, today I've got two audio clips um, that I'm, I would like you to hear. Um, as, as discussed previously a couple of times now, this study is, is different to every other study because we, we looked at the whole team. Um, so I have an example of um, a ward clerk and their experience in the ED um, and a physiotherapist. Can we start with the ward clerk, please? Everybody, when they first come in to the emergency department, we give, um, give them an idea of what to expect while they're here. We take all their details, um, and help them with wait times, that sort of thing, yeah, and where they are in the queue. Um, they can come up and ask questions as they do all the time at any stage and we'll just try and answer them to the best of our ability. Yeah. People are really nice. Um, I wouldn't do it if they weren't. Most of them. I think signage is very, very hard. Uh, they're stressed, they're sick, they just want to be seen straight away. Um, you know, everybody thinks they're an emergency. So um, I guess what they need to realise, um, and probably a prime example of that, and one lady actually knew the night we were having from all of us, because we all had tears in our eyes. Every single staff member that night had tears in their eyes. That was that um, lovely nine-year-old boy who died due to domestic violence. Um, and, you know, I came back out of the resource room after getting these details, 
and my colleague was in there also and she just burst into tears and the lady I was serving at the desk after I'd come back out said, you guys aren't having a good night are you? And I said, and no we are not, yeah, it's not very nice nice place out the back here um, and I guess they knew that from all of our emotions just I guess you can see dark clouds over all of us um, yeah instead of that happy go lucky smiley face that you see coming come on in welcome hello how are you today no. it's like oh god so in fact the patients were um, showed great empathy to the staff that day that particular patient did yeah, yeah. yeah. there were others that didn't um, there was a long wait that night. It was a very, very long wait because we had um, a lot of teams working on that little boy for a long time. Um, and a lot of uh, staff were taken, obviously, from the floor to take care of him. And people just don't understand that. They don't understand that it makes people, other people wait in beds because they can't move, because their results can't be looked at. They can't go to the wards without uh, doctors looking at that. And they're busy with the patient in recess. That's the way life goes and then obviously the waiting room patients have to wait because there's no beds to take them to out the back. Yeah. So I'm standing the process of how things work, I guess, or you know, a little chain of events. Mm. No idea that we want to see them go through just as much as they do. Yeah. And it's that that we want to try and get across to them that um, yeah. Have any of us in this room to this point um, ever thought about what it's like from the ward clerk's point of view? We certainly, we as a team, we all talk together. We hopefully all de debrief together in our own department ways um, and in our own nursing ways. Um, but when I heard that clip, um, I, I don't think I'd really ever understood um, retrospectively what it would be like to be a ward clerk in our, our department. Um, and I think um, Melissa there gave us a, a fabulous perspective. Um, and did, did that give us empathy um, for her position? Um, yeah, probably did because it was a pretty strong clip. The next clip is um, one of our physiotherapists. Thank you. Common thing can see a rolled ankle or broken wrist, that sort of thing. Um, the fall, etc. Kids injuring themselves, whatever it may be. Um, now, generally, you know, if it's, if it's indicated to do an X-ray, if something's fractured, uh, we are more than happy to put plasters on. So we do sort of pride ourselves a little in doing the plaster, and we actually very much enjoy it. So that's good. And I think, uh, uh, from my experience, a lot of the, the doctors are sort of happy for us to do that, and they, they're quite appreciative, which is good. Um, so I definitely like doing the plasters, um, and practicing those, the back slides. So we do those. And say if it's not injured, and they think it might be, and it's, you know, an ankle sprain, it's not really fractured. We're very happy to go in and do an hour assessment and see, you know, and try and, and I guess uh, the most rewarding thing is try and give them a bit more of an understanding of what might have happened. So if it's not broken, that's fine, but then this is what you might have done. You might have sprained this ligament or, you know, done this injury, etc. What sort of time frame you're looking at, um, and, you know, we'll refer you to our patient clinic and I'll follow you up there. So that's probably one of the most rewarding things, um, being able to do that and to sort of give them a bit of, I guess, uh, relief that, oh, okay, it's not too bad, it's not going to test this, it's going to get better, that sort of thing. And that's probably one of the best things about working in day. You give people immediate sort of satisfaction that, okay, this is what you've done, most likely, this is, you're, look, you're looking at this sort of time frame to get better, you should be able to walk in a couple of days and follow up here, you'll be all right. And that's probably the best thing. Um, I think you get a different type of, like a different, um, I guess, age group of patients in ED compared to on the wards. So I've done, you know, I've spent the last year working with where it's very much a different age group you're working with. And it's not that it's a good or a bad thing, it's just a different experience. So um, I guess people down here um, have a lot more questions and want to know a little bit more rather than, you know, that. But yeah, so you do have to be a little bit more, um, I guess, prepared to answer a lot more questions down here than I think up on the walls. So up on the walls, they're quite happy if you're, you're getting up and moving and you're trying to get them home and that sort of thing. Whereas here, they most likely we see injuries, so they want to know what's happened, why it's happened, how can I prevent it, that sort of thing. But from my experience, they've all been very good um, sort of interactions. Like, like I said, everyone's happy to know what's happened. That's all they want to know. Like, have I broken something? You know, have I injured this? What have I done? And so, I, myself personally, I've never had a really bad interaction down here. And even like in terms of waiting, people are very happy to wait. 
how do we do it? Uh, for our own staff, we put um, onto uh, the internet, onto a computer, um, a iPad kind of model, um, and we took that round to our staff. Um, obviously, we don't do that in the tea room because that's our own time, but we, um, during, uh, occasionally during in-services, um, occasionally during downtime, we ask the staff to, to listen to patients' experiences um, and ward clerk experiences and physio experiences for patients and for their carers. Um, we asked our hospital volunteers to be involved and we asked them to go around to the appropriate patients, the appropriate uh, deemed by the clinical manager or myself, um, and asked them to, to ask um, patients and their, their visitors to be involved. Um, you can see some of the quotes at the moment, um, was a good way to learn more about the ED while waiting to be seen. Um, we didn't use the waiting room as such. Um, we, we used the patients that were already in, in the examination rooms, already in beds. Uh, the results, um, the participation indicated that after listening to a story, 93.2% felt that they had a better understanding of the situation experienced by the emergency department staff, patients and their visitors and significant others. Uh, so that was the result we were looking for, um, naturally, um, that um, empathy can be felt for, by everybody. Empathy can be felt by patients and all of the team um, and not only nursing. Limitations, uh, single centre and a small centre being Calvary, um, and we, we were only able to get um, a small number of participants, um, but, 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 but very happy with what result we, we were able to gain. And at times we still use uh, the video recordings. Um, during a busy Canberra winter, um, you, would, you would aim to increase the empathy throughout our own team and throughout um, patients, with patients and visitors, uh, because we all know during winter it's pretty hard yards. The message, empathy is a critical aspect of patient care um, for us, for nurses, for doctors, um, for all of us, and also for the people, uh, for our patients and for their significant others waiting. Audio recordings demonstrating a patient and healthcare clinician experiences from the big 360 degree, degree perspective are an effective way to share the, the familiarities of people of an ED, promoting the recipients walk in another person's shoes. So empathy to the nth degree. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jodie. Fantastic idea. Uh, any questions uh, from the audience at all? Excellent. Thank you. Oh, hold on, Jodie. You don't get off that easy. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, actually, I would love to wonder if um, we thought about asking empathy from our inpatient teams and the empathy from which we might receive from our colleagues or ward nurses as well, uh, whether that was something that probably needed exploring. I, um, I think we probably would all support across the room that that's actually um, not a bad extension to, to this study, um, to bring um, the medical registrars in, the, the big teams in and um, see what they, they think and see what they feel and vice versa. And then we understand um, what they're feeling each time they walk into our emergency department. Totally agree. And probably the other way too, you know, it would be lovely to hear uh, actually ask our ED staff from the ward nurse's perspective can you have some empathy for maybe how things are, as John McKenzie maybe alluded to yesterday? Um, you know, there's a lot going on in ED. Yeah, and there's a lot going on for, for the teams as well. Yes. Both ways. Yeah. Cool. Mark, yes? Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, please go ahead. Okay, just globally, did you notice that teams um, that it had a ripple on effect that we were more acknowledging of other teams. Did you notice? And we didn't use other teams as such. We only used our our team as in. Are you referring to clerical? Oh, like physios. Clerical, the physios. Did you just notice that uh, you know your emergency team became more inclusive of all disciplines? I think that they understood a little bit more about each other's role, mm. um, which was the you know that was the nice thing that they they actually went yeah we we all know that we all need to be there to work together for the benefit of the patient, um, but do we really understand what it's like from, from the other person's perspective? Okay. Um, so I think um, all of us might agree um, that we, you know, we had a, a percentage of that for a little while That's from fantastic. this study.
dear to my heart. I just wondered, um, in terms of measuring team cohesion, have you got any sort of plans for the next sort of step in terms of seeing really its, its impact? Um, no, not particularly until this point, which I guess that's the point of networking and conferencing um, and understanding what's happening around around Australia and around the world. Um, and Matt's um, discussion point there of, you know, do we add in the next step um, of bringing um, other teams in and understanding both ways? Um, so maybe that will be our next step, you know. Um, I guess it was more about your own ED team and there are tools that can measure sort of team Mm -hmm. And so it'd be interesting with that intervention, even if it, you could s consider that as sort of your pilot work, and then, then next test step. it still again to see did as sort of the intervention of empathy that you described or um, take out, did it actually create greater ED team cohesion? Um, uh, you know, as 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 a, as a sort of validated measure. Of Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Definitely. Please uh, thanks, Jody, very much, guys. That was a great talk.